All right, uh, February 10th, 11th class, um, 2021, and this is for pre-advanced. Hello, Leo. Hello, teacher. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. I'm good. And you? I'm fine. Thanks. Great. Hello, Leo. How are you? Hello, how are you, how are you Leo? Leo? Uh, well, good morning, teacher. Hello, Leo. <laughs> how are you? Hi. Uh, I am happy. Good. Uh, Okay. Good day today. Yeah. All right. Nice day. It, it was a nice day. Right? Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Lucia, how are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine. <laughs> Hi. All right, so today we're going to be getting started. Um, the idea is we're going to be taking a look at cross cultures. Okay, so different types of cultures, different things that uh, that we have in different cultures. So the first thing is, what other cultures do you know about? Okay, tell me a little bit. What other cultures um, do you think or, or do you have information about? Um. For example, in our country, uh, our being uh, is our culture, the pupusas, for example. The pupusas is uh, our, our food, our culture. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I suppose uh, we have a, a, a different kind of culture, right? Yeah, language, um, a vocabulary in Spanish for behavior of the people, the culture, you know, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right, so for our culture, for Salvadorian culture, one is the food, the pupusas, right? Yeah. Okay, good. What about from other cultures? What do you know about other cultures? What about like Mexico? The taco, the food too, uh, the cultural the tacos, food. Huh? Tacos. tacos from Mexico. Tacos. And the cultural is uh, rich in, in culture. Okay. Or oh, whose cultural is rich, I don't know how to, how to say. Oh, that's right, that's right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Me Mexican people, uh, for example, there, there are a lot of, a lot of seniors and La, ran La Ranchera, for example. Ah, yes. Uh, but they are, they are culture. They, they are culture. Oh, it, it's culture. The Ranchera music. The music, yes. Yeah. Another one is uh, 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 the hat, right? the big hat, the similar as the CPT. Oh, the, the big ones, right? That, uh -huh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, this is culture. Uh, the Virgen de Guadalupe right? and the uh, religious. Uh, because if you visit uh, the downtown of Me Mexico, the, the Virgen de Guadalupe Chur is uh, mandatory to visit. <laughs> yeah, it's a cultural religion. Uh -huh. And this times too, the Narcos movie. The what now? Nar Narco movie. Narco movie. Narcos movie. Narcos movie. Oh, yeah, the Narcos movies, right? Okay. Also popular, right? Yes, movie. So poppers. Aha. Aha. Juana la trailera. This is all fashion, Luis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. we're going to begin by watching a small video about this. We're going to watch a small video about cross culture. That means 
um, the different cultures around the world, okay? So we mentioned uh, Salvadorian, Mexican, but there is a lot of different cultures. So let's watch the video and see what we learn about the other cultures. So watch the video. What cultures do they talk about and what do you learn? So two questions. Watch the video. What cultures do they talk about and what do you learn? Okay. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camila and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four, and I've lived here ever since. And two years ago, I went to Sweden, and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different, because here in Brazil, we kiss on the cheek, and they shake hands. So I went to kiss, like, and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that, it was strange. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman and she was making me lunch one day and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. 
Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepatzlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Okay. Was that okay? Yeah. Yeah? Um, okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our, we're going to make some groups. And in the groups, what we want to do is we're going to talk about what were the three countries, okay? What was the shock or what was the, what was it that was, that they were referring to, okay? Then you want to talk with your partners about your experiences. What are some things that you have noticed? If you have traveled, what have you noticed that was different or surprised you? Maybe you haven't traveled, but you have seen people come, some Americans, Canadians, and you say, oh, they do this differently, or you have seen other people do different things, okay? All right, so let's make our groups. Remember, first, the video. What are the three countries and the things that they are surprised for for each one, and then your experience? AD, you okay? And you, what, what, how are you? Uh, it's okay. Um, so boring. <laughs> um, we're gonna talk about the videos, uh, about the countries, uh, in the videos. <laughs> uh, so so. Uh, I listen the video, but I have problem with my computer and the internet is in unstable. Yes, I I have the same problem with internet. I saw uh, the video in the uh, woman in the screen. Is, is, uh, uh, you experience experience in Rio de Janeiro. The teenager uh, blonde and explain about Rio de Janeiro. Yes. Yeah. And the food, I don't know what is that. I, I, I don't remember that the eight. Um, it's a good fav, uh, flavor, but I I don't ask what is the component in the food. <laughs> but, and, in what and, place? What else? Yes, in El Salvador, uh, Mrs. Lee, Mrs. Pan. Uh, the, I I don't remember this the name. Um, and the and the food. Delicious food, but I, um, <laughs> uh, the, the, my friend only told me, don't ask with the food because it is so delicious. Uh, you can, uh, you can to eat, but don't ask. Uh, many people in the bus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the third is the Mexico City. Yeah. Hmm? What do you think? Is 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 the barn in 
in Mexico and um, and live live in the United States. Mm -hmm. And the marry and the American girl. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking in the, about the sandwich, super sandwich. Uh, um, rice, beans, and meat. Uh, okay. Holy. Okay, his name uh, was Delfino. <laughs> yeah. And he talked about the, this, his experience in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Similar. Now about uh, one experience um, in my last work, last, last work, I, I made um, in other things. Oh, and he's you, surprised you, because uh -huh. it's in USA, the lunch <laughs> is not very strong, only a sandwich, bye bye. And uh, Mexico oh. is like a mm -hmm. uh, Yeah, I understand now. <laughs> uh -huh. um, about experience uh, you have or do you see? um is i don't remember when i i was in guatemala is like like el salvador it's not different mm -hmm. about the the weather or um the people indigenous with the the clothes and she and he said that the that uh, that that food is a bean, rice, maybe the similar or food. Uh -huh. okay. I I don't yeah. know. I don't know, Eduardo. You, but uh, maybe I I I I hear about that 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 said that that the the, the food and, and and maybe in in that area the similar our food bean, rice, tortilla. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> in the second video, uh, he he's from he's from U uh, USA, uh -huh. but he has a Mexican face. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Okay. okay. Well, um, your experience about um, country. Uh, um, he. Explains its food is different, and I live in USA. Yeah. And food is different, and the person introduced. Yeah, yeah, and the in the United States very different the, the culture, <laughs> and public transportation is uh for example do you remember Peru is very different the, the North American person I don't know. Uh, is more friendly, but in another country is uh, more distance between uh, your culture. Yeah, that's true. The people in here is They're, more party. They keep their... <laughs> <laughs> yes. People here is very friendly. <laughs> Yeah. Um. Okay. <clears throat> We're getting most people back. So, with our groups, we discussed a few of the things, our experiences that we had, okay, uh, which is very good. So, and what were some of the things that they mentioned? Well, let, let's talk about first the video. Uh, what were the three countries and the three things? Go ahead, Anna. The video, talk, the video talking about three countries. The first, Rio, 
de Janeiro en Brasil, the second Peru, and third in Mexico City. Exactly. Yes. So Rio de Janeiro, Peru, and then finally Mexico, what we talked about. Okay. Now, what was the difference in Rio de Janeiro? What was the difference in Brazil? The public transportation. I see it in Peru. That, yes, that was in Peru. Exactly. The public transportation is in Peru. Oh, yeah, sorry. Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> the people. People kiss uh, two kids. <laughs> that's right, and that's it. That's different for El Salvador, right? We give one, and they give mm -hmm. one too. Okay, so one is the kisses. Or three, mm -hmm. or four. <laughs> <laughs> or more. It depends. Uh -huh. it depends. <laughs> okay, and correct. Peru was the public transportation, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then finally, okay, what about Mexico? What do they say about Mexico? Parenthetic food in comparison with food user. Okay, so, right, that the Mexico is, is the food that is very different how they have it, especially the, the lunch, right? The taco. <laughs> no. <laughs> They, they don't say tacos, but yes, they, they mentioned the lunch. Uh-huh. What is the difference? <laughs> what is the difference in Mexico? In Mexico, it uh, rice, beans, and meat. Mm -hmm. And they usually have a big lunch, right? Not like the Americans. The Americans have a something small, something light many times, and they say, and then they continue that usually they have a big dinner or maybe they'll have a big breakfast depending on the situation. Okay. Uh, what, the hamburger. No, no, hamburger. Have, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. No, it's a, a North, big breakfast. Uh, yeah, if, if you ever go to to Denny's or, or someplace like this, you you see the, they always have these big breakfasts, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what about you? What what about your experiences? What for you was the most interesting one? In my case, I probably in the United States, uh, uh, in the in the in the midnight and um, and go into to restaurant and 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 I uh, oh sorry uh, I dinner and the sandwich light and and the the chicken and two to bread and uh, um, como se pechuga, teacher? Uh, and the chicken, chicken breast, chicken breast, chicken breast, mm -hmm. two, two, two chicken breasts and, and the, and the, and the, and the bread or uh, uh, in the midnight, oh, uh, uh, no light. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so we're, we're doing good. We're expressing ourselves. We're describing how the cultures are different. We understand, okay? We, we're understanding the ideas between what you like or what uh, uh, you don't like. And sometimes there are differences. It's, we are, for example, in El Salvador, is very common, but no, not common. It's, it's obligation, eat pupusas with the hands. Obligation to eat your pupusas with your hands. Yeah. But for many Americans don't like, or many Canadians, because they use the hands and they say, no, this is dirty. It's, it's, like, for, it's like the concept of India. India, all of the food is with hands. And for us, oi, oi, but we eat pupusas with hands. 
We eat pizza with hands. We eat tacos and, with hands. And India, all the food with the hands. Yeah, yeah. But th so these are some of the cultures. So the way that we think of India is probably the way that the Americans <laughs> think of us when we eat the pupusas with the hands. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the ideas for the cross culture. Now, when we are describing things, when we're talking about uh, in general concepts, we use many times the word that, okay? And we use expressions like one thing or something or, you know, the, the thing, okay? This is for general ideas. So when we're talking about general ideas, normally is this concept and you use the word that, okay? So maybe you like, or maybe you don't like, but you say one thing that I like about Brazil is the kisses. I like the two kisses, okay? Or one thing I don't like about, uh, uh, about Brazil is the, or about Peru is the public transportation. Now you can change this for one thing for something is the same idea. One thing is one, something is in general, but these are the concepts that we use. So here we're going to take a look at a, a small video to explain this concept of how to use one thing, something and that. Okay. Hi everyone. By the end of this class, you'll be able to express your feelings towards traveling to other countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends. By the end of this class you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. And then we'll move into the object, probably the object, I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, is the verb to be is. And then that's followed by um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I'm I mentioned, sorry, I mean. uh, one thing. Sorry. What? Okay. One thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've, I've colored that in green so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a, what's, a, uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it, but we're going to try to uh, make different sentences with them, all right? So um, 
I mentioned one thing. Um, you could you could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you can say two things, or you can say uh, two things that I miss would be, and then you mention what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses, and let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question. So what would you be nervous about? when traveling to another country what would you be anxious okay so let me pause it there because this part is the easier part to understand if we look at it so what we want to do is we want to give the the beginning of the sentence with the subject that is we want to start with one thing something um uh, two people uh whatever it is that we're talking about that in general terms that's where we're going to begin then we give our, where it says relative clause, we give our opinion. Ah, this is, uh, I'd really like, I'd be nervous about, uh, I'd be anxious about. This is your opinion, what, what you feel. This is like the emotion, okay? Then always, if it's singular, you put the verb is, or if it's plural, you put the verb are. And then the topic, what, then what you are going to say, okay? So... If I go to another country, one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking, okay? And if I change schools, one thing I'd be nervous about is meeting new people. Okay? So the idea is, or the concept is, we begin with these words, one thing, something, two things, five things, what, whatever you want. If it's just in general, it's something, okay? Then your opinion, I would really like, I would hate, I would really miss, I would love, I'd be nervous about whatever your opinion is. Then what is going to make you nervous? What you're going to miss, what you're going to hate? That's going to be the, ah, I'd really miss, I'd really, uh, I really like is, and then the compliment, right? So let's take a look one more time. So we can see we have many different things that we can give, uh, they give as an example there, okay? You have, um, I'd really miss, I'd be nervous about, I'd be anxious about, I'd be comfortable with, I'd be curious about, I'd be enthusiastic about, okay? So what happens if you have, uh, you win Loting? <gasps> Ooh, if I win Loting, one thing I would really, or one thing I would buy. Okay, now we are talking about buying. This is what you what your opinion is. One thing that you would buy. What? Ah, uh, one thing I would buy is a car. Oh, one thing I would really be nervous or scared about is oh, the gangs or the rent. If, if I win the lottery, the low thing. Okay. Is that okay or? Is good or bad? How is the concept? More or less. <laughs> More or less. That's good because we're going to practice it. In this moment, we are going to practice with our partners to make sure that it's clear, okay? So uh, we're going to finish watching the video and then those sentences we're going to complete one thing I'd be nervous about, and you complete with your idea. One thing I would like, or I, I one thing um, I'd be comfortable with, okay? So first, let's finish the video, and then we're going to practice in our groups. By me asking you the question, so what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated by? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, all right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, all right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is 
getting lost. All right. Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay, so for me, one thing I really be nervous about, or one thing I'd be nervous about is getting lost. One thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'll be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you okay, so as you can see, all of them you are talking about, you are giving your opinion, your ideas about if you go to France, if you go to another country. Ah, if I go to France, oh, one thing, and then I'd really miss one thing I'd be nervous about, one thing, and so on. Okay, so we're going to do the same concept. This is from, in case you are in your, the platform is 5.3. So if you are in the platform to make sure that you have it, it's going to be 5.3 in the platform. And we're going to practice it with our partners. And you can change one thing for something or two things, and then just your ideas. Imagine you go to another country, you are going to you have the opportunity to go to maybe to China or to Russia or to Africa you are, or the US, okay? And you are going to give your opinion for all of those situations, okay? So remember, all you have to do to practice it is complete that part, like the part that is in black. So if you go to, if you go to Russia, one thing I'd really miss is mm, pupusas, because in Russia, I don't think they have pupusas, for example. Okay? All right. So we're going to make our groups again, and we're going to try it one more time. You okay, Anna? Okay. The food. What about the food? Uh, for example, the food, Italian, Chinese, what do you prefer? What kind of uh, the, the food do you prefer? Um, let me see, I think uh, I love Mexican food. The tacos. Yes, tacos, tortas, that all. <laughs> yes, it's a good. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about the exercise, the, the, the complete the sentence. Uh huh. Mm. Charles Green, um, example. Okay. I I was uh, uh, thinking about one thing I'd be anxious about is talking in English in another country. <laughs> okay. And movies. Um, one thing I'd be curious about is um, um, learning uh, another language. Um, enthusiastic. 
you know, two things I'd be enthusiastic about are and drive my car and playing basketball. And one thing I fascinated by is um, learning play piano. Okay. Hi, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ricardo, yeah. sorry, You're learning what? Playing uh, piano. Ah, playing piano, okay. Uh, I have visited uh, Guarmada. Okay, good. Chile, to be exactly. Uh, and I would like to visit Germany when it's snowing in winter. Okay. What, what thing uh, do you miss uh, when you visit uh, Guatemala? Uh, the food of here. Ah, food. Salvadorian food. Yeah. What yeah. kind of food? Or typical food. Typical food. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the pupusa, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, and in Guatemala, there is not too much places that they have uh, pupusas. Ah, really? Yeah. What what song did you visit uh, Guatemala? What? La zona. What song? Ah, Panajachel. Ah, Panajachel. Yes. All right. It's yes, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Then you go in a ferry to kind of island. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I don't know you, Anna. Maybe I um, told you. Yeah. And the next, I will be nervous, nervous about is uh -huh. when I I must talk in English oh, really? because I, <laughs> uh -huh, o sea, for us the address or or something uh -huh. I I have I would be nervous. Okay, good. But I need practice English. Uh huh. It's, it's, <laughs> for, it's for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe, uh, yes, when the, the teacher, yeah. Elwin, we help me. <laughs> he, he helped me. <laughs> Exorcise me. <laughs> Demons <Yeah>. out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a demon. <laughs> I have experience when uh, in a, a company and a company when coming the gringo around uh, my group, maybe uh, I uh, always I, I don't like it with him because my English is not good in that time. Uh, how, how do you say me, me apartaba, me alejaba del gringo, <laughs> right? Because I, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I am afraid to talk with 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 him because uh, my English, I remember, is very, very difficult to, to, to understand the native language. And, uh, and when need to say something, uh, the North American lingo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't you, wanna... Guillermo? Guillermo. What? Oh? Uh, what? Um, do you remember? Yes, um, and another and another um, food, the beans and the beans. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I will, if I miss atol? the beans. <laughs> hmm, I totally think, but let me see what more what more I miss. Hmm. Tamales. All the food is made with elotes. Uh, yes. The, yes, the I, tamales. The tamales. Tamales, atol, 
eh, el hotel loco mmm, yes, <risa> por otros <risa> <mix. risa> yes, I, 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 I like the lote loco crazy corn I, I don't know but it's a <risa> and, and they put the the, the, the uh, let me see the cheese and the mayonesa and another uh, the ketchup Whatever you want. <laughs> yes, that, and, 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 and here all, all family prefer the, the typical food. Yes, yeah, so but I think uh, the food I be curious about is the Japanese food. It's to relative clause. Uh, you say um, a pronoun. You don't say a verb to be. Ah, okay, okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I need practice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we are need to practice. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, okay. It's a subject plus verb to be, must noun, a plus noun, plus relative clauses. It's okay? Subject plus relative clause. Plus per to be plus object. That is the structure. Okay. That's right, teacher. That's right. Uh, you okay. can see. Okay. We have right there. Okay. Subject plus relative clause. One so moment. Okay. And maybe at, at the top. So that way you can see a little bit better. Okay. Mm -hmm. There. We have a subject, relative clause, the verb to be, and the object. Mm -hmm. So the subject, really what we're talking about, the subject is that phrase, that expression, that one thing, something, that the, the people, the, the man, or the, the woman, or, you know, the car, whatever that general thing is, okay? So it, it can be any... It can be, the subject can be anything, but it's in general terms, okay? And then the relative clause, which is really another way to say, a, kind of like your feelings, your emotions, what you think, okay? The verb to be, and then the object. Now the verb to be here is in present, but if you wanted to talk about the thing that maybe you went on vacation, and then you are saying, oh, I went to the US and one thing that I really missed was because you are talking about when you were in the United States. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's, it's okay. possible here because we are imagining the future. If I go to another country, if I go to, you know, another language, I try new food, but you can use in the past also. The verb to be um, um, can be in present, past, or future. Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So then uh, the object uh, may be. Uh, and um, what else? It's not necessary. Uh, we have to use um, ing, right? Um, not not for the verb. It, it is uh, one, for example, one thing I, it's about. Let me think. You can use the infinitive. You can say, for example, one thing I'd like to learn is to cook food. Okay. Mm -hmm. It, it okay. depends on the concept, but it's That's between right. ing or the infinitive. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. Welcome. Okay. So. Okay, so do we have any questions? Are there any parts where it's still not clear or do you want to 
uh, you want to see if you are correct or anything? I need practice. Mm -hmm. More practice, more practice. Yeah, I mean to you know, more practice. Me too. Okay. Teacher, uh, uh, in your house, listen, boom, 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 boom. It's in my house, is boom, boom, boom. There is a party. Okay, okay. It's a, big, a big party, yeah. <laughs> I, oh, I the week. <laughs> oh, all the week. Oh. <laughs> all the week. Hermano, hermano Lejano and have parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry, teacher. No, no, no. I imagine, I tried not to, but you can... I, I imagine you can hear because you hear the the boom. That's why when I when I enter, if you see all week when I enter, I put silence so that no not interfere with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, teacher. Okay. Well, okay. Um, yes. So we have the idea for the concept for how it's going to be to practice. Right? Is we give first the main idea the thing, something, uh, whatever we're talking about, the, the cars, the, whatever you're, you're describing, okay? Then is your opinion. That's the relative clause. The relative clause is the word I'd is, no, I had, is I would. I would is I'd really like, I'd enjoy, I'd miss, I'd be nervous about. This is the I'd, is I would. Okay, and then always the verb to be. Um, you can use the verb to be in past or present or future, depend the situation. Here we're using the present, but the verb can be, can be in different forms. And finally is the idea of what you are talking about. What is the object, what, uh, the, the, the car, the food, your mom, your friend, the, you know, the country, okay? Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to practice. We still have some more minutes. So we're going to go back to our groups and we're going to practice here. You don't have to talk about traveling. You can try to practice in different concepts. Talk about other things, maybe uh, food, maybe a uh, uh, visit. Maybe if you don't have your cell phone, oh, if I don't have my cell phone, one thing I miss is the whatever, but the important is to practice using. Okay. So let's try. The practice is a different thing. Yes, correct. The practice is different topics. Different topics. Different topics. Okay. Um, for example, in the in the um, in your pastime, what do you prefer in the pastime? My pasta in food. Aha, uh, pasatiempo, the pastime. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, my pastime is uh, drive my motorcycle okay. in weekend. Uh, Every the weekend. Yes. Some friends uh, co uh, spoke about this. Yeah. I have a friend that work in the Prens Africa and he said that someone called it and said, please give me your uh, uh, do it name or do it name, <laughs> do it number uh, and the other thing, but was a fraud. I don't, I don't yeah. Know. Say fraud, but 
So uh, one thing I be um, anxious about is proud. So for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And the uh, in the in the last weekend at the mountain or lake on the restaurant and to pass a good moment and pass a good moment and a, a, a moment funny uh, with uh, the between uh, uh, the uh, between day um, but in my in my case uh, I dislike the motorcycle because I um, I was seeing different accidents in the carretier. And, oh. and I, uh, I saw um, part of the quarantine. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was kind of frustrating and difficult. Yeah, yeah. I usually don't go out every Saturday to drink or something like that. I'm not that, that kind of person, but, but I really miss uh, to go out with friends or family uh, because of the situation. Mm -hmm. That was mm -hmm. the thing that I missed a lot in December, th this last December. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Yes, in my in my case, the similar something uh, that I really I really miss with uh, a familiar meeting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we mm -hmm. uh, we to talk about all family, um, to eat with all family, to cooking. Um, yeah, the the celebrate in December, everybody. But the last the year, uh, <laughs> but the last yeah, but the last year only. We uh, we celebrate the the, the fin of the year with my mm -hmm. uh, my my mom, my wife, uh, and my yeah. son. Only that, yeah. It's, uh, I, I don't I don't know how do you say uh, the, what? the circle only circle um, close circle cluster cluster the president um, says cluster. Cluster, yeah, 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 the cluster <laughs> only, only my cluster, only that, in, in, yeah, because my mom is uh, maybe uh, she, uh, she, she has seven, seventy five years old, right? Yeah. Wow. Well, uh, we were protected yeah. about the pandemic. Yeah, you have to uh, prote protect her. Uh, yeah, it's, you can uh, put her in risk to get the virus. Uh, uh -huh. it, it was different. One thing I we, one thing uh, I that I I would really uh, uh, doesn't like that that uh -huh. that that pandemic rocking all plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah that's uh, maybe the worst uh, part. We all have plans, dreams, and I don't know, something we imagine in our heads and then the pandemic appears and everything goes down, right? Okay, so I hope we're understanding a little bit better the concept of how to use it. We can use it for different ideas, not only for travel. Here it's because of the topic, but the concept of using these relative clauses is just to give your opinion, give your opinion in general of, and, and be able to speak uh, in general terms. That's why we use the words like one thing or something that are the most common words, okay? Um, then, of course, always remember is the verb to be indicates the time, if it's in present, if it's in past, this, or, you know, in general terms, normally we just use in present, 
okay because you're talking about all of the time okay so when i when i forget my phone as an example one thing uh one thing i hate is when when i forget my phone and i need to make a phone call or uh one thing i hate is if i close the door and i forgot my key <laughs> this is terrible okay that's the ideas for using these all right well i hope that helped you we're going to pause right there and then tomorrow we're going to go ahead and continue our class the last class for the week tomorrow so remember to keep advancing in the platform because woof, five more classes and we are finished okay okay teacher. okay guys have a good night good night, good night. Good night teacher. tomorrow bye see you tomorrow, tomorrow. bye, -bye. Happy nights. Nice. You too. Nice. Bye.